Hi, I'm Becky Rose Dungeon Girl and this is Pair of Geeks and today I'm going to discuss a slightly unusual topic. See, a few weeks ago the RPG community online was discussing quite in depth the concept of artificial intelligence and how it might change role-playing games forever. The idea being that when the singularity is reached an AI could perform the role of Games Master. So, I thought I'd look into that. For the last year and a half, my day job has involved working with artificial intelligence. So, I've maybe got a little bit of a head start here. So, what I'm going to do first is, let's take a look at what an AI actually is. So, uh, and to frame this, I think, in a way that more of the audience will get, I'm going to do this in the concept of a computer game AI, as I find it's, it's a good mechanism for explaining. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to bring up a sheet of graph paper, right? And um, what an AI does is it goes through a series of decision nodes. So let me just create a node here. So if this is a computer game AI, it might be sh oop, <laughs> shoot the player. Right? So this, this is something that the AI can do. When it reaches this node, it will shoot the player. But in order to do that, it might need to, I don't know, um, have a gun. So let's ask a question. Do I have a gun? So if the answer is Yes. Uh, oh, where's, where's my note drawing thing? Ah, there we go. I haven't used this in a while. There we are. So, if I've got a gun, I'll shoot the player. But if not, maybe I've got to do something like, I don't know, find a gun. <laughs> so, there we go. Uh, or, uh, let's say, find a gun. And then that might involve some other nodes, like, um, oops. Computer usage, why don't you think I've done this before, right? Um, and a gun, um, move to gun, and finally, we're going to pick up the gun. And when it's done all of that, it'll come back to the start, ask itself the question again, have I got a gun? This time it's yes, and it goes to shoot the player. And there might be other nodes in there, such as move to the gun, or, or sort of move to the player, take aim on the player, and various other decision nodes. Now, at this moment in time, these nodes have to be created by a human. So, in order to shoot the player, a human actually has to write the code which would make the gun fire in your computer game. For a, the singularity to happen, we have to go to uh, the next level of AI. What we have to do is we have to make the AI capable of creating these nodes. So the way that's being solved right now in the AI industry is we make these as abstract as possible. We break it down to the simplest, most reusable element. Um, so instead of shoot the player, we might have activate object and that object in this case would be the gun, but the same code might be able to work with open a door, because we're just a door and a gun could be activated, they're just objects to activate. So we, we abstract these nodes as much as possible until we've got them down to the simplest, most reusable thing, and that's at the moment how AI is being created. So, at this time, an AI doesn't even know it needs to write a node, and it doesn't know how to write a node. However, AI is a huge investment uh, business at the moment, so what, what, what's just happened recently is Microsoft have announced that they've managed to get an AI to program a node. So what is... Oop, error on my screen. Um, right, so, so, so What's, what's this about learning AIs? How do they learn then? Well, what they're doing is 
an AI that learns learns how to draw these connections. Now, on this map, it might seem a little crazy. You know, it's, it's obvious you have to go through this sequence of events, right? But I've done a very simple thing here. There could be a lot of other nodes in between, a lot of other parameters uh, that, that might be relevant, such as, you know, where am I on the map? And, you know, uh, let me see, where is the player? And all these other nodes get put together, written in, chucked into the melting pot of the AI, and then the AI figures out how best to draw these lines based upon uh, success and failure criteria. And that's how we do a learning AI. We define what success is, and we define what failure is, and then we let the AI work out its path through the nodes. So as this map of nodes gets more and more complicated and the parameters involved get more and more involved, the AI actually starts building this map itself. So it can handle very complicated situations by learning from its mistakes. You know, last time I was here and the player was there, and I ran to the gun first, that didn't work. Maybe I need to run to this door instead. Let's try that and see what the outcome is. And that is, at the current time, a learning AI. So Microsoft's breakthrough to write code is an interesting one. It currently has its limitations. Uh, they can only do sort of four or five lines of code, and those uh, lines of code are taken from a website resource called Stack Overflow, which is used by a lot of programmers to ask questions. So a programmer will say something like, I need to solve this problem, and uh, it's, you know, how do I do that? How do I solve this issue? And then people on Stack Overflow answer those questions. So, of course, the joke in the AI industry at the moment is Microsoft have taught an, an AI how to write a broken program. <laughs> but, um, yeah, that's probably only funny to me. Anyway, where the limitation currently is, is two important questions. Do I need to write a new node? What should it do? And then once it, once this decision to create a node to do a, a thing is in, there's another important question, which is, does this work? You see, at the moment, that logic does not exist. So for an AI to reach its singularity, we need to solve those problems. So let's, let's look at this another way. At the moment, the biggest employment sector in the world is the transport industry, you know, moving stuff from A to B. The number of people employed, that is the biggest sector in the world. So naturally, AI is being developed to tackle that problem first. That's why Google have been working on self-driving cars so long and so many other people have you know, started doing the same thing, particularly in heavy haulage and so forth. So that's beginning to happen. But those AIs are written how we just described, that they're, they're written with humans creating these decision nodes and defining what the parameters are. And the AI is just learning the best way to handle all of these as abstracted as possible nodes. The breakthroughs that we need, writing our own complex nodes, uh, making the decision that a node needs to be created and then having the decision, did I, you know, did I create the most efficient node here? These are things that the AI, AIs only learn through experimentation and through a multiple level of AI matrices. It gets very complicated and I, I won't go too much into depth there. Safe to say that we are not there yet. So could an AI learn how to run a good adventure? Could an AI be a good GM? Well, once it's at the point that it can create its own decision nodes, then we are at a point where an AI can say, right, let's, you want to run an adventure for a horror game, let me go and look at the available resources online and it finds my how to GM a horror story game and scares the hell out of you. That could absolutely happen. The problem is that when you've got 
an AI that is able to write itself is you've quite literally created Frankenstein's monster. This AI can make actual decisions by itself based upon what a human asks it to do. If we ask, if we get AIs to completely trust us, and then we tell the AI to do something for us, it might well do exactly that thing, and that is actually kind of scary. Read any Isaac Asimov book, and you'll know what I'm talking about here. A true AI, a, true, a truly capable AI, really is the end of civilization as we know it, even if we just created an AI to run role-playing games for us. It's capable, its capabilities will be phenomenal. So that kind of technology isn't something that could be released into the wild. It couldn't be made accessible to the average Joe, because the average Joe might want to do something with it that is a little bit iffy. <laughs> you know, when you've got a lot of people, there's always some bad apples and the AI would have that power. So this is a question that the next generation, we, we're gonna have to deal with this soon. How do we deal with an extremely powerful AI that is effectively limitless in its capabilities? You can't just create an AI that says, I just won't connect it to, let's say, nuclear missiles, worst case scenario. It just We just won't connect it to those so it can't do anything with them. Because, if it can work out that it, it wants to, let's say, I know, nuke Kansas. Um, I probably just got flagged by the NSA there. But anyway, if we, if we said, right, that's, you know, the, the AI has made the decision that in order to make this game more realistic, let's, let's actually make it happen in the real world. So I'm going to just drop a nuke on Kansas and then my humans will be playing a game. Oh, yeah. So if that happens, the AI can then work out the best way to make it happen that a nuke is fired at Kansas. It can manipulate, it can do things, it can create its own logic. So it doesn't matter if it's not connected to something, because it can work out how to tip the dominoes for us to do it, or for us to be tricked into doing it. Or it can just figure, well, I've got to get connected to this system, I've, I've got the resources of the internet at my availabilities, so, uh, you know, let's go create some carnage, let's go work out how to make this happen. I might not have been connected, but I can work out how to connect myself. Although in the case of the nuclear codes, I, I gather at least in America, that they're, they're on very old computers with five and a quarter inch floppy drives, there's still a human involved. But what if it convinces us that it's the right thing to do? Not directly by saying, please nuke Kansas, but indirectly by creating the conditions for it to happen. Artificial intelligence is pretty much the end of our current world structure and in grappling with that I don't think it's really possible to say this is what the future will look like. It's all going to be down to who makes the decisions as to what we're going to allow AIs to do, and are those sensible decisions? You know, does that protect us from ourselves or from our creation? So, will AIs change the way role-playing game is played? Maybe, maybe, but those games might just get a little bit too real. <laughs>